takes great wisdom for a man to be able to lead a soul from death unto life. I beseech you, get involved. It's time for us now to take evangelism out there. We're going to pitch our tent. We're going to do a good work. And you keep on pointing. We're going to pick up our tent. And we're going to keep on moving for Jesus. Evangelism is contagious. Let us start an epidemic. series under the caption of the soul. Have you been blessed by it? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, we believe that it would have been a great blessing to the church. And so we sought to present it in a manner which we can be edified by. We're going to have a word of prayer. And we're going to sing our theme song and get right into this evening's message. Let us, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, this afternoon once more we are assembled in your house of worship, dear Lord, to, to sit at your feet. O oh Lord, we know that you are desirous of returning, but there are so many people unwarned, so many that are ignorantly worshipping at the altar of Baal. And Father, you have committed to this, this denomination a momentous task, and that is to prepare a world for your soon coming. And Father, we know that soon and very soon, momentous event will take place and we don't want to be passed by. We want to be included in the finish of the work. So Father, we have come today to be edified, to be equipped. I ask a special blessing upon this evening study. May it do for us what we can't do for ourselves, which is prepare us for active labors is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing our theme song, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart. <clears throat> Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And may I bravely my part to win that soul all together now some soul for thee some soul for thee this is my earnest plea help me each day on life's highway to win some soul for thee Lord lead Lord, lead me to some soul in sin and grant that I may be endued with power and love to win that soul. Some soul? Some soul for thee, some soul for thee. This is my earnest plea help me each day on life's highway to win some soul for thee to win to win will be my constant prayer that when I've won thy full reward, I'll with that Like we mean it now. Some soul for thee, some soul for thee. This is my earnest plea. Help me each day on Amen. We're on page number 86, plowing a rock, lesson number six. Now, um, we know that as we go forth to do our agricultural work, 
now and then we'll hit a rock, amen? And we can draw a instructive application from this, this, this session. Our thematic text is Proverbs 11, verse 30, and it says, The fruit of the who? Is a what? Tree of life. And he that what? Winneth soul is what? My dear friends, I want to tell you, it, no fool can be a soul winner. It takes great wisdom for a man to be able to lead a soul from, from death unto life. And I believe with all my heart that the persons that God qualify to be involved in this work can rule a nation, can run an empire, can even rule a country. Our thematic text is evangelism is what? Contagious. Let us start and what? You know, beloved, some of you may not know this, and I, I, I thought I had my, um, when I was at FIU, we had to compile a, um, each athlete had to compile a little portfolio. So I had, I have, I have a whole video session of me and, you know, playing and so forth. But before the Lord called me to, 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 to his work, I was attending FIU in Miami. I was, I had, I was recruited from high school and I was the starting forward for the men's division one soccer team NCAA and all my life I've always wanted to be a professional and I realized that you know at that time if you wanted to be you had to go to Europe that was where the money was and so I, I, I said Lord I, I got to get to Italy man I got to get there and I and by the grace of God I was you know able to, to go there and I never forget um, I'm from, a, I'm from a large church, the Lauder Hill Church, this is the mother church. Every church came out of that church. And um, an evangelist came through, and a, a strong wind. And almost every individual except the two pastors got rebaptized. It was a powerful revival, one week. And when I came back, I went to look for my buddy, um, and I said, I was, let's go to the movies. And he said, man, I can't go. I said, what happened? I said, you look kind of strange, man. You just took, you're just kind of glowing. And he said, listen, man, I'm going to give you a cassette tape. You know, that was a long time ago. He says, you go home and listen to it. So I went home and I, um, we had a tape player, put it in. The sermon was called Short Circuit by an evangelist, uh, Stephen Lewis. I tell you something, man, boy, that, that, that cassette hit me like a ton of brick. I took it, that was the Sunday. The Monday he gave me a, another one called the Days of Noah. Tuesday he gave me another one called um, Poisoning the Pot, the Pan and the Pipe. And he just kept on, by Wednesday night I was in prayer meeting. Literally, I was, I was in church. Friday night I found myself at the church. The elders were conducting, they were having the teachers um, Sabbath school revision. And I said to Ella William, listen, man, I need to get rebaptized, man. I don't need no teaching. I don't need nothing. Just have the pool ready for Sabbath. And we talked. I got rebaptized. Never went back to Italy. All my stuff was still there. And I was home, didn't know what I was doing, you know, reading and so forth. And I had a dream called a vision. What do you want to call it? But it was so surreal. Um, it was unbelievable. I dreamt I was coming out of Inverary and I... I was at a bus station, and, I, and the bus was coming, and I stepped to the bus, and a man was right beside me. He said, not that bus, and he pulled me back, and I stepped back, and the first bus passed. The second bus came, and he, I stepped forward. He said, no, not that bus, and I stepped back, and when the third bus came, he said, that's the bus. When I got on board the bus, I kid you not, man. There was all kind of people on the bus. White, black, people in suits, farmers, mechanics. Just a multicultural of people. And I asked the driver, where is this bus going? He says, we are the reapers. We are the reapers. Beloved, he said, take a seat. And I'm holding the railing. And I said, excuse me, excuse me. And finally, there was a seat almost at the back. And as I sat down, a man got up. And he said, let's sing that song. This isn't a dream, you know. And when he raised the chorus, this was the song that they sang on that bus in my dream. Oh, where are the reapers to garner? And let's sing it. 
The sheaves of good from the fields of sin. With sickles of truth must the work be done, and no one may rest till the harvest. Where are the reapers, oh, who will? And join in of the harvest, oh, who will help us to garner in? The sheaves of good from the fields of... Verse 2 says, Go out by the highways and search them all. The wheat may be there, but the weeds are tall. Then search in the highways and pass none by, but gather... Oh, where? Where are the reapers, oh, who will bring the glory of the harvest? Oh, who will help us to garner in the sheaves of good from the fields of sin? The fields are all ripening and far and wide. The world now is waiting the harvest tide, but reapers are few and the work is great, and much will be lost should the harvest. Oh, where, where are the reapers? Oh, who will glory of the harvest? Oh, who will help us? To garner in the sheaves of good from the fields of... So come, so come with your sick, cozy sons of man, and gather to go there the golden grain. Toil on till the Lord of the then share ye joys in the harvest. Where? Where are the reapers? Oh, who will? And share in the glory of the harvest. Oh, who will help us to garner in the sheaves of good from the... Beloved, that was the song they sang on the bus. And then I woke up. Beloved, there are only a few, few instances, not in your handout, in the scriptures where Jesus admonished his disciples to pray. And when Jesus says pray, if you can pray, you better pray. Only a few instances. In Matthew 24, we know this text, verse 20, he bid his disciples pray. He therefore that your flight be not in the what? Amen. Neither when? Now Jesus here was making reference to the, the destruction of Jerusalem that would come in 70 AD when Christ made this statement. We know from a biblical dating, uh, dating chronology that it was between 30 to 31 AD when he made this statement. Right? It came to fruition in 70 AD. So he told them, pray because the Sabbath was a holy day, and you know, oftentimes when you're fleeing, you may defile the Sabbath, right? And the disciples, said, the, the record said the disciples did pray. And Josephus, Flavius Josephus, who was a historian, he said they actually prayed that their flight be not in the winter, on the Sabbath, and history said they fled on a Wednesday in October in 70 AD to a town called Pella. This is historic, the Jewish wars by Flavius Josephus. Right? So he bade us, he bade them to pray. Now the second instance where he bade them to pray, and this is where we're going to take flight. In Luke chapter 435, Jesus says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then come the what? Harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for there are what? And ready to what? The harvest. Then he says now in the book of Matthew now, 9 he says, the harvest, then say to the disciples, the harvest is truly what? But the what? 38 now he says, pray 
Ye therefore, that the Lord of the what? Will send forth what? Laborers what? So do we have a problem with the, with the harvest? No. no. What's, where's the problem? Laborers. That's the problem, you know. That's always been the issue. It's never with the harvest. The issue has always been with the laborers. As it was back then, so it is today. We need to pray. Seriously pray. Now I'm going to show you what we need. We have a serious problem. Friends, by, um, the world consensus, there's about seven billion people in the world today and these people groups are divided into three groups either you're part of the dragon <laughs> the beast or the false prophets we learned this in our, our Wednesday night prayer meeting the dragon is paganism all pagan religion the beast is catholicism and the false prophets are apostate protestantism right now let me give you a, a serious stats why we need to pray these 7 billion, we have over 4,200 religious religions, right? Christianity, Catholicism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, right? And then we have Judaism, right? Christianity makes up 2.2 billion. This is conservative, right? And then the non-religious groups are 5.2 billion Christians, right? Not, not non-Christian, non-Christians, right? So we have the Christians and the Islam, Hindu, Buddhism. These are, part, these are all paganism, right? We call them paganism because outside of Christianity, you're classified a pagan, right? Now, this is the challenge we have now. We have 19.1 million seven million, And this is not even accurate because the books are always cooked. As a matter of fact, a buddy of mine said he was installed at a church that had 500 members. He said, not, I've never seen a hundred on a given Sabbath. So I don't know, oh, come on, that, that, that's bad. So, but let's just say argumentatively, we have 19 million. That's less than one-tenth of one percent. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Listen, so it's almost like a, you're taking a, 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 a grain of sand in the, ground and the, sand, the, and the beach. Yeah. Right now. Therefore, each, we would have to reach 7 billion, we would have to reach with the message for the time. Right? Now, the other sheep, so you're looking at, if you do the math, we need to reach at least, it, it's each person. <laughs> That's just conservatively. would have to reach, you'd have to go out there and win or warn at least 387. This is we don't even have churches this pack, some churches. And not to mention the language barrier we're dealing with. And the dialects. You see what I'm saying? Now, this is the problem now. Only 10% are doing do anything in the church. Listen, it's the same people. We know this. Nominating committee. It's the same man, he's been the head of for years. It's the same Sabbath school department leader. It's the same people doing the same thing over and over and over. And the rest, I don't know what they're doing. Right now. So as this goes down, 10%, what increases? <laughs> Precisely, who you have to reach. Right? So you look at the problem now that where we had 308, you, you have 39, almost 4,000 persons. Saints, we could never finish the work. Then we're going to have to have a power outside of ourselves. The latter rain. But we still need to pray. We still have our work to do. And beloved, I'm telling you, I have resolved in my spirit now, I am done preaching in the walls. Uh, me personally, that's where I'm at in my, in, my, in, my, in my heavens now. Saints, we've got to go. We've got to get out of the walls. And I want to, in, beloved, let me... My time at this church, I know, see, I, I'm movements. I believe providence is going to blow me somewhere else. I, I see it coming. I'm telling you. And you shouldn't weep. You should say hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you'd have been equipped and mildly furnished. And if you want to let somebody come and turn you into a zigzag, shame on you. 
and turn you sideways and upside down and send you back to Egypt. Not shame on me, shame on you. But saints, God is calling us to work. And I tell you, I have no desire to make money, no retirement, no Ponzi scheme, no kind of, no nothing. I am resolving my spirit, Lord, I want to go out there, lead me, Lord. Lead me to some people group somewhere. I, I, got so, I got so much to say. It's time for us now to take evangelism out there. We've been in the walls too much. This, this, we're comfortable here. Now we, now we came here and we, we, our numbers grew and we were able to you know, reorganize and so forth and get us together. But it's time for, and I want to implore you, I beseech you, get involved. Start some kind of ministry, man. Give out some books. Start in your neighborhood, man. Start where you are and God will bless you. He will take you far and wide. Get involved. Get involved, I beseech you. At your school, get involved. We have social media. Get on Periscope, man. I heard that sister dance on Periscope. Hallelujah, I'm saying. Start saying something, man. Somebody will log on, man. I'm saying. We've got to the corner right that foolishness out there. Use those devices for good. I believe time is almost finished. And we have a short work to do a great work, short time to do a great work. I want to, I, I, and I'm telling my, me and my family, Lord, we are now missionaries. Did you hear what I just say? We are now missionaries. That's where I'm at my, my thinking now, Lord. Lord, just, you, just, you just point on the map. And we're not going to argue. We're going to pitch our tent. We're going to do a good work. And you keep on pointing. We're going to pick up our tent. And we're going to keep on moving for Jesus. Amen. I want to encourage you. Let's get active. Amen. Do something for Jesus, man. Get in the books. Time is almost finished. Beloved, so we have a problem and only God alone can, can solve it, right? Now, if you're honest, oftentimes as we go out to farm, you'll hit a rock. Now, let's look at this video now and tell me what. Now, this is actually a tractor fair where, you know, they, they, they demonstrate tractors. And so if, if farmers want to purchase 10 or 20, it's almost like an expo, right? And I, 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 something happened which was very, you know, almost, you know, <laughs> Bizarre. This is a powerful tractor. Wouldn't you like to have this? Well, you make some money off this bad boy. You know what I'm saying? You could, you, could, you could feed somebody with this. This is some serious agriculture. This ain't for your backyard. This is from a commercial supplying Walmart and Publix. Right? Look at this tractor now. Plowing a rock. Look what happened now. You saw that? What happened? Now look what happened. So he hit a rock. Now look what happened to the, the teeth of the tractor. Did you see that? Now this is not some of the Pepsi tin can here with some aluminum. This is some serious steel. And just by plowing a rock, look what happened. It actually damaged. Look at that. That man can't even lift the thing up. Broke it. Now what can we glean from this as we plan to go out to do evangelism? We'll begin now by posing. Look at that. Serious. Serious. That man barely could lift that. Look at that. That brother is struggling, man. Right? Now let's... let's Begin by posing a question. Question number one I says now, uh, what does Amos discourage a farmer to do? Now, this is agricultural, right? Amos chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says, Shall horses, fill it in now, shall horses run upon rocks? Will one plow there with an oxen? Right? He says, For ye have turned judgment into gall, and the fruit of the righteous into hemlock. Shall horses run upon rocks? Of course not. Will one plow a rock? No. What can we glean from this? Albert Barnes um, wrote the Barnes commentary. And he wrote this. He said, So now please read from the two images. The two images both represent a toil which people would condemn as absurd 
destructive, as well as fruitless. Uh -huh. The horse's hoofs or his limbs would be broken. The plowing gear would be destroyed. So in other words, people don't plow a rock. If you put the horse upon a rock, it will destroy the horse's hoof. Yeah. Or you will damage. It is a fruitless toil. As a matter of fact, I read somewhere, you know, in ancient times when, when prisoners were, sent, were found guilty, they were sentenced to hard labor. Yeah. This is what they had to do back in the days, man. For the chain gang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Today, prison is almost like a hotel in some cases. Yeah. Man. These guys, three square meals. These guys come out looking buff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Healthy, strong sitting. Make you want to just go rob somebody and go to jail, right? Guys come with PhD. But back in the days, this was hard labor. Hard labor, right? Fruitless, right? Now, we believe that plowing a rock is likened to an objection. We will meet them, beloved, as we do evangelism. How do we handle objections? Now, what is an objection? What is it? By definition, fill it in now. An objection is an obstacle, follow me now, that people face as they encounter ideas contrary to their own way of thinking. It is an honest block to making a strong decision. The block must first be removed before they can make a what? Decision. I want you to follow me now. Plowing a rock, right? They are convinced that their objection is valid. Fill it in. Valid. Right? And we need to take it seriously. It could be that their objection is based on a failure to see the need for a decision. It could be that they are what? Apathetic. Apathetic. Follow me now, right? They may be looking at the, fill it in, consequences. Right? Of a decision. They may see a social, financial, or family problem will result if they decide to eat the Sabbath or get baptized, an objection. Now, how do we handle objections as a people, right? I think this is the way we do. Question number three now says now, when the Samaritan village objected to Jesus and his apostles to passing through their village, what were the sons of thunder's attitude towards them? Now, this, now we are the sons of thunder. Because well, nothing has changed. This is reality. The Bible says, when the disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou fill it now that we command what? Fire. Fire to come down from heaven and to consume them as Elias or Elijah. There are no journey in the Greek. Elias did. This is the topic. This is a typical response. I mean, if, you know, if, if we're teaching a, a lesson, our brother objects. You know, what do we do? He raises his hand, you look over here. He's over here, look over here. You know what I'm saying? And the guy's like, <laughs> you know, and you, you, you just, you just, you castigate the man. That's, and when people don't think the way we think, we tend to come hard on them. That's the human nature, right? But that's not really the right, the right approach, right? Often we look at objections as barriers or obstacles when we should view them as opportunities to lead precious souls to Jesus and his truth. Our natural tendency is to meet objections head on and to do what? Amen. Beat them down. And I've learned it's all about perception. Because perception, the glass can either be half what? Full. Or half what? Empty. Half empty. So when a person rebuttals or objects, you can see it you know, as, as an opportunity. To see why there's an objection, right? Now, how do we do it? Now, we are told objections, son of Israel, can be an indicator. Objections can be indicators that the person is warming up to the subject, but has not made a full decision yet. Uh -huh. An objection may be their way of defense. Uh -huh. Sometimes, an objection is a request for more information. Information, right. Now, the 1888 dilemma, heard about it? <coughs> Let me see how those know about the 1888. All right, good. All right. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you now. I need somebody, don't look in your book. Since you say you know about it, this is a typical life in this. No, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Tell me. I don't know. I can't find it. Right? Tell me the four, five movers and shakers in the 1888 dilemma. A.T. Jones. Jones. Wagner. Butler. Ellen White. Butler. Smith. This one said Wagner already. Butler. U.S. Smith. And who else? Butler. 
Where's Butler? G.I. Butler. Butler, all right? So you guys saw my notes, I'm, right? <laughs> all right, so the 1888 dilemma, these were the movers and shakers, right? Uriah Smith, G.I. Butler. G.I. Butler was the, the president at the time. Uriah Smith was the, the prophetic watchdog. He was the, you know, the one who had a premium prophecy, right? Then we had a, a young, well-spoken A.T. Jones, and we had his, his, um, his sidekick, E.J. Wagner, Elliot J. Jones, J. Wagner, and Ellen White was caught in the middle. Now, this is a challenge we have now, right? Ellen White actually came to the, 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 the disappointment with the two. They were her childhood buddies. So they were like an, a, a filial, a, kind of an attachment. But then now, God ro rose up two young men. Now, believe it or not, one of the reasons why the church objected to the message is not so much the message itself, it was how it was presented and the attitude. And because these two men did not know how to handle objections. And I'm going to show you. Now, let's, so now please read. Now, this is um, what Ellen White says about the message. Please read the message. The message of the gospel and of his grace was to be given to the church in clear and distinct lines uh -huh. that the world should no longer say that Seventh-day Adventists talk the law, the law, but do not teach or believe Christ. Now, it is true, beloved, that there was a point in our history where we had applied the law till it was dry as the hills of Gilboa. Yeah. Now, we are far from that today because we've just gone to the other extreme, just love. You know saying? But back then, God now said, I need to balance the ship. Now, Uriah Smith, this was his contention, his own words. Please read on. I naturally have too much iron in my nature and not enough of the love of Jesus. So from his own word, this man was a hard knocks guy. I have too much iron in me. Right? Please read to be like Jesus. Butler. G.I. Butler. Right, go ahead. To be like Jesus, wise, patient, kind, tender-hearted, frank, I have a great struggle with the old man. Wow. So they're admitting they're, they're false. Right now, Elder Smith, go read, please. Elder Smith has a reputation of being one of the ablest writers and speakers on the conference and is moreover a profound scholar. So he was the old watchdog, right? Now, look at what happened now, right? Mm -hmm. Having, by long study and years of observation in the work, become settled on certain principles, I am not prepared to flop at the suggestion of every novice. Who was he making reference to? You think he was making reference to? Jones. Jones. Yeah, exactly. You guys ain't going, I'm not going to flip at any old novice. Like I'm some novice, are you with me? So he was already, already hardened. He put his dukes up. Are you with me? Right? Then we have these guys now, Jones and Wagner. Elder El Jones? Elder Jones has loved discussion and contention. I fear that E.J. Wagner has cultivated a love for the same. We need now good, humble religion. Uh-oh. So these men had that issue too. Yes. Right? Keep on reading. E.L. Wagner? E.L. Wagner needs humility, meekness, and Brother Jones can be a power for good if he will constantly cultivate practical godliness. All right. So, beloved, we have an issue, the dilemma now, right? When this message was presented, the men objected. And because they had too much iron in them, the wonderful message that God gave to the church was pushed aside and we are still suffering from that today right now this is what she wrote to um i know she said something was so profound she said that there's a possibility that jones and wagner may be overthrown by the enemy but we were not to take that the work they did was not didn't bear the insignia of heaven this is imperative because sometimes we throw the people, person out with the backwater you know what i'm saying but no, the work they did, they, the message was of God, but even if they were overthrown, don't disregard the message. Now, when the message was presented and it was rejected, A.T. Jones really took offense to it. So much Ellen White now had to write a letter to him to seek to 
kind of change him of his attitude. Objections. Please read now. We long? We long to see reforms, and because we do not see that which we desire, an evil spirit is too often allowed to cast drops of gall into our cup, and thus others are embittered. Mm. By our ill-advised words, their spirit is chaffed, and they are stirred to rebellion. So isn't, some, isn't it sometimes, don't we want us people to do right? We want to see reform. We want to see our family members get on board. But if, and we don't do it. We oftentimes now become bitter. Right? She says, Every sermon you preach, every article you write, may be all true, but one drop of gall in it will be poison to the hearer or the reader. Mm. Because of that drop of poison, one will discard all your good and acceptable words. Another will feed on the poison, for he loves such harsh words. He follows your example and talks just as you talk. Thus the evil is multiplied. Wow. Then she says, go on. Those who present the eternal principles of truth need the holy oil emptied from the two olive branches into the heart. Uh -huh. This will flow forth in words that will reform but not exasperate. The truth is to be spoken in love. Then the Lord Jesus, by his spirit, will supply the force and the power that is his work. And his position is our position today. Friends, as we go forward, not everybody will agree with us. You will get objections. How do we handle objections whereby that blockage can be removed and they can see what we're saying, right? No, stand up, please read. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised by objections. Uh -huh. Expect them. Uh -huh. When we hear or learn something new, we often look at it with suspicion. That's true. We often challenge new ideas. This is normal. It means the person is thinking about what they have just learned. Objection, objections typically come in the form of questions. When dealing with objections, there are five factors to keep in mind. Now, beloved, this is the typical way of handling objections, right? We want to knock that person down. <laughs> we want to fight fire with fire, right? But sometimes there are two ways you can fight fire, you know. You can use fire, which is called control burning, but then there's sometimes you can use water, yeah. right? No, so how do we deal with objections? One, let's fill them in now, right? First thing, always, fill it in now, always deal kindly, lovingly, and positively. Always deal kindly, lovingly, and positively. Always, under all circumstances. You know, when we were in school, we took a class called Public Speaking. And, you know, we were taught how to control yourself. Even a person challenge you on the floor. You smile and, you know, you, you, you try to be very part. Don't, don't get drawn into that. Always, under all circumstances, even when you're teaching a Sabbath school class and somebody asks one of these weird questions, that doesn't do with anything. Always deal kindly, lovingly, and positively. Right? No matter what type of question it is, always is asked, or how it is phrased, we should always respond in a Christ-centered method or manner. You always want to affirm your student's mind, it's just mind, that you care about him or her by using positive phrases, such as, that's a very good question. Or, I'm glad you expressed yourself that way. Or, you know we're going to have a whole lesson on that subject a little later on. If you don't mind, can we discuss it more thoroughly at another time? Or you're teaching Sabbath school and somebody, you're talking about Abraham and somebody brings in John the Baptist. You can say, well, you know, I, I, I appreciate your question, but we're really focusing on John the Baptist now. Um, when it's over, we can talk about, you know what I'm saying, or vice versa. You always want to say, I'm telling you, right? That's a good question. Why don't we finish the lesson? We're studying now, and then we, at a close look, we look at what the Bible says about the subject, right? And why says, feel now, now please read often. Often as you seek to present the truth, opposition will be aroused. Uh -huh. But if you seek to meet the opposition with an argument, 
you will only multiply it. Wow. And that you cannot afford to do. Uh huh. Hold to the affirmative. Angels of God are watching you, and they know how to impress those whose opposition you refuse to meet with arguments. Did you get that? Yeah. You will meet them as you go into homes, on the jobs, as you seek to present this message. People will object. I am a Sunday keeper, or whatever they'll say. An objection. Secondly, right? Discover what the obstacle is. This is imperative now. Discover what the obstacle is. It's there. It's something there holding that person from going all the way. Right? Um, according to King Solomon, what usually holds the sinner from surrendering all to Christ? Proverbs 5, what the Bible says now, his own iniquities, fill it in now, shall take the wicked himself. He shall be holden with the cords of his what? So something is holding that person back from making a total surrender, from going all the way to baptism. Discover what it is. Are you with me? Once you have the object removed, then you can flow. Right? Note. We're told in Review and Herald, so now please read the sacred responsibility. The sacred responsibility rests upon the minister to watch for souls as one that must give an account. Uh -huh. He must interest himself in the souls for whom he labors, uh -huh. finding out all that perplexes and troubles them and hinders them from walking in the light of truth. Let's discover what the obstacle is. Right? Note. We, can re we cannot read minds, so we must ask questions to determine if our interest understands what has been presented or do they have objections, questions on the subject. Before you try to diagnose the problem, allow your interest to fully explain their side. Right? Remember that God gave us what? Two ears, Two ears and only one mouth. Your goal while you listen to the objection is to discover what, is re what, what really hinders them from making a positive decision. You can give Bible studies until you endlessly, with no risk progress, if you don't first discover what is the true, what is the true obstacle. Right? Why listen to your interests? Always maintain a what? Eye and body language that lets them know that you are listening and you what? Okay, you can't be talking and you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. It's almost like you're annoyed. Body language says a lot, right? Two, never interrupt or argue. Always maintain a soft tone in your voice. You may win an argument but lose the interest. Always dwell on the affirmative, not on the negative points, right? You need to know what is holding the person back from keeping the Sabbath or attending church or even getting baptized. Something is hindering the person. We must first seek to discover what it is. Thirdly, right? Seek the Lord for what? For wisdom. This is imperative, brothers and sisters. Proverbs, seek the Lord for wisdom. Right? How to handle objections. Seek the Lord for wisdom. Proverbs 2, 6 says, For the Lord giveth what? Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Right? Note, understand that you may not have all the answers, but God does. That's why we need wisdom. Very imperative, right? Objections. It is of the utmost importance that you lift your contact up in prayer on a day-to-day -day basis. Daily, you're praying for these people you're going to meet as we go out in the field, right? Ask God to give you the right words to say at the right time, right? You are God's instruments. Let him use you and watch the miracle that will take place. Remember that God has spoken through a bush, and a donkey, he can speak also through you. Right? So, we want to deal kindly, positively, lovingly. Discover what the obstacle is. Seek the Lord for wisdom. Fourth and now, how do we handle objections? Show the person that you understand the objection by repeating it in their own words. Show them you understand or you respect what they're saying. 
So am I trying to say, Brother Dennis, the reason why that you can't come at you because you don't have any clothes to wear? Yes, so if I took you shopping, you'd come? Yes. Well, all right, let's go. Are you with me? All right? No, stand up, please read now. An, an effective soul winner? An effective soul winner learns to separate, to separate genuine questions from common excuses. Uh -huh. The goal is to get a commitment that if the objections were cleared up, then he would make a decision right away. Mm -hmm. You can do this by repeating the objections. All right. For example? Do I understand that the issue holding you back is opposition that you may receive from your spouse? Husband, job, yes, that's the reason why I don't come to church, right? Or, do I have it correctly that what is really concerning you is X, Y, Z, right? Or, is this your only reason for not deciding? All right, or, is this the only thing holding you back? Or, if this issue were cleared up, could you see yourself making the decision for the Bible, the Sabbath, baptism, health, etc.? And in most cases, if we discover what's holding them back, and if we supply the answer, none of the ten chances they'll go all the way. And it can be something as simple or insignificant. I'm going to show you a powerful testimony that happened to me while I was doing a campaign, and it was only a twenty-dollar bill. Now twenty dollars ain't nothing, but to that person, it was a whole lot of money. And I'm going to show you, right? All right. Always, fifth and all, always answer their objections from the what? Right. Beloved, this is imperative. Always answer all objections from the, from the Bible, right? No. When responding, please read. No. When responding to an objection, you want your answer to be short and concise. Uh huh. An effective way to accomplish this is by using Bible text as the basis for all your answers. All right. I, I am? All right. Is it in your, is it in your book? Yeah. All right, good. You... The answer is it is written. Okay. All right, here it is now. Here it is. Yeah. Go ahead now. Jesus. Jesus was the master at answering objections. Uh -huh. When Lucifer tempted him in the wilderness regarding obedience to God... Three times Jesus gave a most clever Philibin. answer, it is written. Uh -huh. Jesus used scripture to deflect the fiery darts that were thrown at him by Satan. So you want to use scriptures, especially when you're getting down to clinching decisions. Scriptures to answer objections. Not in your own words, because they'll say that's what you say. And they can't take that to the bank. You want to get them to hold to the scriptures, right? Objections. Please read so today. So today, if people bring to you objections uh -huh. to the truth and mm -hmm. try to stir you up, do not become excited. Uh -huh. Keep on the track of the affirmative. Uh -huh. Affirm the truth. Thus saith the Lord. There it is. That's it. Thus saith the Lord. Full stop. Right? Often you seek to present the truth, opposition will arouse. But if you seek to meet opposition with argument, you will only multiply it, and that you cannot afford to do. Hold to the what? Affirmative, very important. Now, now remember, very few people make up their minds to accept the truth and unite with God's last day church without a struggle. Yeah. The devil is not going to say, oh, we've been buddies now for 30 years. You found a remnant church, but let's sit down, let's talk. Ah, see those brown books? Read them. They'll do you good. Get to church early, attend prayer meeting, please witness. He's not going to do that. Listen, he will kick and scream and fight. Even, see, he, he will not give up. Even when you join the church, he's not giving up. Amen. Nobody will leave the ranks of Babylon without opposition. There you will encounter serious opposition. And the reason why, because once we start going out, you will, see, you will see the devil. He will do everything to get a person from stepping out of darkness. Been there, right? Sixthly, keep your heart and your mind in tune to God through prayer. Always keep your heart and your mind 
in tune to God through prayer, right? Now, this is a, a promise we, we found in Gospel Workers. Ellen White says, if the worker keeps his heart uplifted in prayer, God will help him to speak the right words at the what? At the right time. Now, there are some techniques we can give you that will help you to handle this kind of situation. It is called the three Fs. The three what? Three Fs. Now, what it is now? Fill it in now. One of the most effective ways to handle objections is to use the three F. F, F, F. Use the three F's frequently when objections begin to surface. The first F is feel. Fill it in. Feel. So, here is Sister Foote. Now, Sister Foote says, she lives in Wellington. She said, Pastor, Sister Pastor, not I. I've been coming to the means. And really and truly, I, I want to keep the Sabbath. But really and truly, my job. I just got this job. I need this job. That's reality. All right? I simple, so I know what the objection is. Her job. Now, when you use the three F principle, you can see simply say, well, you know, Sister Food, I understand how you feel. By letting the person, letting your interest know how you feel, you win their what? So I understand how you feel. Feel. Then you transition now. Then we have what is called felt. Fill it in. Felt, 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 right? Many others were in your, many others have felt the same way. You see what I'm saying? I understand how you feel. There's a brother in my church right now, a man who felt the same way you felt. He had the same situation. Now, look what happened now. No one likes to feel they're all alone in your situation. Share a story of someone you know who went through the similar situation. Now, we're not going to gossip now. But you're sharing a similar situation. There, there was a man who joined our church. I know he had a, a similar job. So what happened now? The person not alone. If God worked for them, he can work for you. Right? And found now. Found. But they have found. I'm going to put it together now, right? So feel, felt, found, right? So, Sister Foot, I understand how you feel. I really do. I have felt the same way. But I have found if you let go and let God, what happens now, you reassure them. They are not alone. Are you with me? Now, so now please read now, it may not. It may not be possible to know beforehand the particular objection or hindrance the student may have in making a decision. Uh -huh. But there are a few general ones that we can have in mind when studying topics such as testing truths. All right, now, you usually tend to meet objections when you're studying what kind of truth? So, go back to our chart. It's in your book. Kingdom. I don't think that the kingdom is kind of testing truths. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect objections if you cover the word of God, Daniel 2, Christ's return of the millennium. They're like, whoa! That's more like a wow! Right? But as you go up the train now, salvation, conversion, the judgment, the law of God, you may encounter it right here. You know what I'm saying? The law of God. Now, You'll expect it right here. The Sabbath, the New Testament, seal of God, mark of the beast, right? Life, healthy living, yes. Getting their money, oh yes. You want one tenth and an offering to Jesus? That's a lot of money. So my point is that you, you know when to expect testing um, objections when you're presenting what? Testing, testing truths, not the general truths. So don't let them, so if you know you're going to present the Sabbath, have your ducks in order. Have your thing lined up. So as they present the objection, out of the park. Home run. But don't go in there saying, oh man, what, what am I going to do? No, no, you got to be prepared. And I always do that. Right? 
All right. Francis D. Nicola was the most able Adventist apologist. Who's an apologist? Another person who apologizes. Who's an apologist? A defender. This guy was good. Very, very good. I mean, I've got his books. And there's one book I encourage you guys to get. I wish I could buy for everybody in this church, but I don't have that kind of money. My pocket ain't that deep, right? But get it. Get it. It is. Let me tell you something. This is good. This is a very good book on objections. If you plan to do some serious soul winning, you will meet them. This book is, now this is kind of my old copy, but it's, just, it's the, the same book. It's, just, it's a cover change, right? But this is a revised version, but only the cover um, has changed. But his answer to objection is very, very good. This man gives you almost every objection that a person can manufacture out there on every topic. And, I, and the good thing about it is, he, he has the text, the Bible text, that will help you to meet objection with a dusty of the Lord, right? Now, oh, right here, Francis D. Nicole. That's the, that's the author, right? It's a good book. And I encourage you guys, you know, go on wherever you buy books and go online, man. It's there, man. Order a copy, man. Trust me, it will do your soul very, very well and use it, right? Right? So this is the book you want to get. Now, so I'm going to give you some situations that we will, you will meet as you go forth in life and as you try to meet people now. These were actual, these, these were not made up. Some of them I have, I have encountered as I have, you know, been doing this thing. Some are people, you know, but these are actual objections people met. People gave when testing truths confronted them. Now nothing has changed because sin is still sin. So what they gave 10 years ago, trust me, are the same today. We need to be familiar with them, right? One, employment, right? Employment is one of we have employment, right? I lose my job. That's a, that's a fact. In some cases, they will get fired. God may not deliver them like he did the Hebrew boys. They will get fired, full stop. And people see this, and they're like, man, this is my, my bread and butter. I can't lose my little job right now. I need this. Right? Or, I can't support my family if I don't work on Saturday. Right? Or, I can't find another job. Now, when a person brings these objections to you, my brother, I understand how you feel. I have felt the same way. But I have discovered, if you would just follow Jesus, he'll take care of you. And then now you reassure them with what? Bible text, right? The promises, right? Fill it in our employment. Now, I just gave you a few. Now, there are several out there you can use. You don't, you're not bound to these, but these are some good texts you can use. Fill them in now, right? Matthew chapter 6, verse 30 and 33 says, We are off with God, those who close the grass of the field, which is today and is tomorrow is cast into the heavens. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of what? Little faith. God will take care of you. If God takes care of the flowers, you're more than the flowers. He can easily find you a job, my sister, my brother. You trust God, man. You reassure them, right? Or, therefore, Matthew 6 says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall he eat? Or what shall he drink? Or whether shall he be clothed? Why? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that he have need of all these things. But what? Seek ye first kingdom of God and not just some but all his righteousness and all these things what are these things God knows you need a car he knows you got to pay your rent you think God doesn't know that and you think my sister listen if you if, 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 if listen if when you were breaking God's law he was providing for you what do you think when you start keeping his law he's gonna kick you to the curb oh ye of little faith you have to believe that Right? Um, Psalms 37 verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be what? God will feed you. God will take care of you. He'll take care of your family. He'll take care of your children. Another promise you can use employment. Isaiah, fill it in Isaiah 65 verse 13. A good text. Therefore thus is the Lord God. Behold, my servant shall what? Don't you want to eat, sister? God will feed you. Right? But, but he shall be hunger. Behold, my servant shall drink. God will give you 
liquid, but they shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but they shall be what? Be ashamed. Uh, let me, let me, let me get back. I want I should have put this in. Let me just close down the screen and show you. It was. Where's the picture from this morning? I'm gonna show you something about the lady. A, a true story. Well, you can't see her because she's, cause she's been blocked. Oh, here she is. Let me. Okay, let me. Hold, let's give me a minute. Let me. Ah, this is not good. I'm not professional, but. Let's be, let me drag it in. All right. Now this thing is kind of crooked. Let me turn her around. All right. This lady here, told you I gave her a story this morning. All right? All right, here she is. All right. I won't call her name, but she came to the meeting every night. And she filled out a baptismal card. When we got to her home, we, um, you know, Evangelist Hollis, he, he taught me a trick. He said, not when you're going to home, you, um, you bring bags. You, you, you buy these white garbage bags with the red. And he says, when you go there, you're going there for their baptismal clothes. Right? So, because, so you know, I'm in charge. So, you know, you know, people tend to listen to the evangelist. So I'm, I'm making my rounds, me and the Bible worker. So each home I went in, I have a baptismal, I have a bag, right? And he says, um, now the white, you work the bag now. The, the white symbolized Christ's righteousness. And the red symbolized the entire covenant. And you say, my sister, you know, tomorrow is your big day and you'll be a new creature. You know, we want you to go get your baptismal clothes and put it in this bag. We're going to put your name on it, and you're ready for baptism. You know, so it's almost like they don't have any excuse now. Oh, I left my, I left my, I left my garment, right? So she gave us her garment. Lady never showed up. I'm like, man, we, I feel so disappointed because, you know, she came every night. She was faithful. I mean, you know, what happened? So when we finished the baptism, I said to the, uh, the Bible worker, listen, we need to go see sister so-and-so, so let's get back to the tent so forth for the last meeting. When I got to the tent, she was sitting in the front room. So I went beside her and I said, um, what happened? I mean, you know, you were all excited and you know, we had a wonderful day. And she says, I know, I know but my job. I said, okay, now I know, we're getting somewhere now. So I said, so, so, so what kind of job you do? So <laughs> she says, I have two jobs. I said, okay, well, well, tell me then. She says, first job I do, I work at a car dealer. So I said, okay, so are you a, are you in sales? Are you in, are you in clerical stuff? I'm trying to figure where she says, no, I, um, I do detailing. I said, okay, well, you know, I did a little detailing myself. You know what I'm saying? I had you know, Amaral and so forth and trying to, trying to lighten the ice. So I said, so, I mean, on a day, I mean, how, you know, how does it work? You know, you, you know, Saturdays is a busy day. She said, yeah, well, Saturdays is a busy day, and I, I, I make $20. So I'm like, $20 an hour? She says, no, a day. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, is you out of your mind? You're going to lose your soul for $20? <laughs> I mean, I was, I was floored. I'm thinking $20 an hour. I'm saying, get me a job. <laughs> $20 a day. I said, man, that's, I started doing the math. I said, you were making a dollar something an hour or whatever. But you know what? For her, hey, that's a whole lot of money. I mean, and she ran in her other job was her other, other job. You know what I'm saying? So I said, we gave her the promises. I said, listen, man, God will take care of you until you get a job. And I said to, said to Pastor Hall, Pastor Hall, listen, the situation, man, the lady needs support. She says, nope, said not. We will give her that $20, man, until she find a job, man. And the church did that. Amen. Literally, they, 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 they got, I said, listen, we need this. She, it's you call them out of Babylon, leave your job. 
I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to take, God going to take care of you and see you later. Today she's in nursing school. But my point is this, that you never know. $20 ain't nothing to me, but for her it was a whole lot of money in Macomb, Georgia. A whole lot of money for her. So, you know, you want to affirm the people that God would use scripture. And we gave her a scripture text, right? Another one, businesses. This is a serious one. You'll find people who have their businesses, right? Here are some objections, right? Saturday is the best day for business. It is. I'm telling you, man, it's the best day, right? My business will be ruined if I close on Saturday, right? I am in debt. I need all the money I can make. Now, I want to give you guys a promise. This is just for us. In volume six of the testimony, how to keep the Sabbath, Ellen White says this. If you have a business, she says you should let your employees go at noon. Right? On Friday. On Friday yeah. Right? And then she says now, in the same chapter, whatever you lose, God will make up during the week. Yeah. It, it, it's in there. And there was a time in Adventism where, you know what? Our schools, 12 o'clock, man. That's one of the things I like about Kingsway. I didn't care much for the religion at that time. But half day, every Friday, boy, I took my money to buy a red, red and ice cream cake and all kind of stuff. Too, but I, was, I was loaded, man. You know what I'm saying? I love Kingsway High School because I'm fr four and a half days with a school. You can't beat that in Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? But as I grew, I really appreciated the, the message and so forth, right? But my point is that these are the objections you'll meet with the Sabbath. Remember, feel, felt, found lovingly. All the things I gave you, but here are, I'll never get ahead. Here are some texts in the business world, right? Another one, you can use Matthew 16, 26, a powerful text. For what will it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And I, and I like to say that. I say, I'll say, you know, Mr. Mr. Jack, you will never gain the whole world, man. The best you'll do in this life, you may own some suits. You think you own your house? You start paying a tax and see what happened to it. You're going to sell your soul for some suits? Never thought of that. What's going to profit you? If you gain the whole world and lose your soul, right? Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your what? Didn't say your want. I know you want a BMW. Right now you need to get the job. Take this Hyundai and keep on rolling. Separate your wants from your needs. Right? Focus on these things, right? According to riches and glory. A powerful text to use to assist somebody who is struggling with the Sabbath issue. And by the way, that's going to be the big issue. It's always the rock of Gibraltar, the Sabbath. Everything else they'll work around, but the Sabbath, now you can't, there's no gray area. It's either you're for God or you're against Him. All right? And we're not going to tell people, well, you know, we'll keep on working on Sabbath till we find a new job. No, not me. You got to step in the Jordan before it parts, sister. That's my advice all the time, right? Then we have another issue now, Saturday and Sunday issue, right? Versus Sunday, right? Objection. It's an unpopular day. It is, right? It is so convenient to keep a different day. I'll be out of step with the rest of the world. Objections. So few people keep Saturday, the majority keep Sunday. It's a fact, right? I'll lose my friends, right? People will ridicule me if I keep Saturday, all right? I'll lose my social standing. They'll think I am a fanatic. We baptized a lady one time, an old lady. And, and the daughter said, if you join them Adventist day, you're going to a nursing home. Now we thought, come on, people wouldn't do that. Yet they put her in a nursing home. Oh, yes, we had to get her out of the nursing home. I'm telling you, man, the devil is cruel, wicked. The church had to rescue the lady from a nursing home. They, that daughter put her mother in a nursing home because of the Sabbath. See, we, see, we, we, we haven't suffered anything. We have, we have it nice and easy. And, but you step out and you, you see the reality. All these are solid objections that people will, they see what is coming and they object. Right? Here are some texts that we could use. Fill it in Galatians 1.10. For do I not persuade man or persuade God? 
Or do I seek to please man? For if I yet please man, I am not the servant of Christ. These are solid texts to use. Who are you going to serve? God or man? Another one you can use, John 15, 14. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, you command. Don't you want to be God's friends, Miss Pam? Yes, I want to be God's. But do what God says, man. Have that sympathetic voice. Plead with them earnestly. Right? And lead them over to the other side. Right? Philippians 3, um, 8, Paul says, Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss. Paul would quit that job today. He'll give it up for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for in whom I have suffered the loss of all. Paul, he lost all things and count all things. And I like to focus on dung. Dung is doo-doo. That's what dung is. Fecal matter. That I may win Christ. And I would oftentimes say, how, if you can't now give up a job, how will you look Paul in the eye? Or Peter in the eye? Who, 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 who was um, crucified upside down? Right? These are texts you can use when you meet objections when it comes to this issue on Sabbath and Sunday, right? This is a big one now, my pastor. My pastor. You'll find most people in the, in the, in the Sunday churches, they love their pastor. Now listen, it's almost like, almost idolatry. Did a campaign one time, a lady came, sat on the second row every night, took lessons upon lessons. Baptism time, I can't leave my reverend. And she never left. And she told me, my family has a whole row in that church. The second row, is our, that, that's our families. And she never left. They are, <laughs> it's some serious attraction there, man. In reality, right? My pastor, another objection, quote, my pastor and my friends against, advise me against doing it. Right? How would you handle this objection? You can't knock them on the head. I understand how you feel. Others have felt the felt same way. But I have found you better trust God more than you trust a man. Here's a text. Acts 5.20, a powerful text. Then Peter and the other apostles answered, we ought to obey God. Now listen, Pam, you came out, every night you came out of the meetings, and you, and you, 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 you take those appeal cards. You stood up, you came up for prayer. I hold it against them. Yeah, you're right, you know, man. Pray for me. Right? There it is, right? Obey God rather than men. One more text. Isaiah 8.20. To the law and to the what? The and I like to focus on this. See, I don't run past these words. The law, the Ten Commandments. The testimonies are all the other books in the Bible. If they, who is the they in this context? Talk to me, Elizabeth. Who is the they? Who do you think the they is? They ain't me, because I'm telling you to keep the law. I work this text with them. Who is the they? If they speak not, there is no light in them. That brother is in darkness, sister. You got to tell them. You're pleading with them. Right? Objections, right? No light. Didn't say some light. It's saying no light in them. And you're going to follow a man in darkness. Right? Objections, right? Another one. If it is right, why do other great ministers and learned people keep? I don't see T.D. Bishop Jakes at your church. Huh? A lady told me that. Why don't you come to your church? Well, that's a good, that's a very good question. Why don't they come to my church? <laughs> it should. Listen, it's not about Bishop Jakes right now. It's about you. He may not know. I'm not here knocking Bishop Jakes. And you, I can't knock him because these people are sensitive. You know what I'm saying? Right? But he may not know what you know. It's all about you. It ain't about him. It's about you right now. And I know if he loves the Lord, which I believe he does, he, he'll come to the light. Right? I can't judge, right? Right? Jesus says, and this is a good text to use, fill it in, enter ye in at the what? Now listen, I told you this morning, don't run past words. Sue, look how that word is spelled straight. It's not spelled S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. No, sir. It is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T. That means strict. It means narrow. It means austere. You can't stagger in this gate. Entering that gate, 
the straight church. <laughs> All right? I, I work these texts, man. For why is the gate that leads to destruction and broad is the way that leadeth and many there be? And I oftentimes say, go opposite of the crowd. Look how the crowd is never right. The crowd is going to hell. Right? You use these texts to reassure them about the issue of Sabbath, Saturday, and Sunday, right? This is a good one we'll get. My mother and my father kept Sunday. Why can't I be saved by doing the same? And why can't you say, your mother and father go hell anyway? <laughs> I couldn't say that. I, I, I gotta respect the person, you know what I'm saying? Now I might say, listen, now I know your parents love the Lord. And I know they're, they're sleeping in Jesus. And if they died serving Jesus, God will save them. But guess what? They never knew what you knew. Right? And I like to use this text in the book of Acts. This is one of my favorite texts, Acts 17.30. In the times of their ignorance, God winked at your parents. Your mama didn't know better. Your daddy didn't know better. But he was sincere. But guess what? You know. You see it. You need to obey. You with me? Oh, bring it back to them. Bring it back to them, right? But now God commandeth all men everywhere to repent, right? Another one, Romans 14, 12, a powerful text that we should use. So then every one of us shall give an account to God, what? And you can work this text. Listen, your mama can't defend you. You're going to have to stand before God and God alone, right? That's a good one to use, right? And then another excuse that people oftentimes give us, uh, Sunday seems right to me. It seemed right to me too. And that's the truth. But what does the scripture say? We know, we know this one, Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death, destruction, damnation, hell, fire. You want to, no, I don't want to be lost. Objections. Lovingly, tenderly, affirm them. Right? These are good texts to use and, you know, it's unfortunate we don't use it because we don't do evangelism anymore. We don't, we, don't, we don't have to deal with these people. But when you start in the work, you're going to meet people who you have to use Bible to get around them. Right? Now, God doesn't care which day I keep so long as I kept, keep one in seven. Now, I must admit, I got this from Evangelist Hollis. Evangelist Hollis, we were down in St. George doing, um, going around trying to you know, clinch decisions. And we came to the house of a teacher lady who was coming out to the meetings. And she basically used this one that God doesn't care. And I like his approach. I took it. Right? But here's a text now. The Bible says, You shall not add unto the word which I command thee, neither shall ye diminish aught or from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I have commanded thee. Right? Exodus 20, 12 says, God says what? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Right? Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the what? Sabbath. Now, Evangelist Holly said, listen, you're saying a day don't matter. Well, why is it that ladies get upset when husband miss their anniversary? It, or worst birthday if a day don't matter. Or better yet, he said to her, you try to tell colored people in this country that any day can be Dr. King's birthday. Or you let a president who is seeking an endorsement say, you know what, forget Dr. King's birthday, we're going to have it in November. I don't think he'll even get through, the <laughs> get through the front door. A day does matter. And he used it against her. And she, she got to thinking. Now why is it that your birthday is so important? Now if your day is important, God's day is important. Use these arguments. To lock them in. Right? Seventh day, right? But the seventh day, you can focus on the seventh, you know, and so forth, right? Good text to use, right? Now, this is, the, now this is, this is a, um, a big one you'll find. Um, cutting old ties. You'll find that people in their, in, 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 in their communion church, they have deep roots. Sometimes a man is leaving his whole family. I've known some cases where the, the, the mother left the children, or the children left the parents. 
deep roots. How do we handle the deep roots? Now, like excuses, right? We find this. This is from um, the book, The Great Controversy. So now, please read them. Many of the ways. Many are the ways by which Satan works through human influence to bind his captives. He secures multitudes to himself by attaching them by the silken cords of affection to those who are enemies of the cross of Christ. Notice she says the silken cords of what? What is she talking about here? The bond. Ties. Silken cord. Here it is now. She says, whatever this attachment may be, parental, filial, congenial, Conjugal or what? So this is the silken cord of affection. This is, a, uh, this is a tender spot right here. Right? The effects is the same. The opposers of truth exert their power to control the conscience. And the souls held under their sway have not sufficient courage, independence to obey their own conviction of duty. So he works with that filial. Some will say, I can't leave my church. I was born in this church. You don't understand. My mother was born here. My father was born here. First Missionary Baptist Church of Wellington. We helped clear the land. And it's true. How do you handle that? What, what, what can you tell a person? Right? Or, I promised my husband I will stay in his church. On, on, his, on his deathbed, I made him a promise. God will want me to make a promise. Break, break a promise. I promise I will not leave this church. I got to be true to my husband. How do you handle that? Or, surely God will not reject me if I stay in my church. Now you can say, sister, Babylon is falling. <laughs> nah, <I'm not. laughs> Come out of her, my people. No, nah, I wouldn't say that, right? But there are other texts you can use to really cut that silken cord, right? Consider this one, right? I love this one. John 10, 26, 27. Be, but believe, but he believe not, because you are not my sheep. As I say unto you, my sheep know my voice. I'm going to ask you a question, Sue. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Me and a goat. <laughs> no, I'm a sheep. But if you're a sheep, follow Christ. Are you a sheep or a goat? No, I'm a sheep. But the sheep will hear his voice, and a stranger will they not. Use these things. That's the only way. There's no other way. Right? Family opposition. Right? My wife will leave me. Right? And in some cases, that it has happened. If I join, my decision will bring division and discord in the home. I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. Is this mark right here? I'm going to tell you something. This man, and, you know, and he died, you know. Two days ago, he died. He died last week. Yeah, he died. And, you know, I, I, I was saying to myself, life is so funny, man. When I, when I saw him, I'm like a friend of mine called me, and she said, Otis, Mr. Richard died. And I said, he died? She says, yeah, he didn't see on Facebook. So I went in, and I saw the man. And I listen, a flashback. 12 Pioneer Views, Tatum Garden, Kingston 13. I remember the address. I was attending Kingsway School. Want to get baptized. And this man used to send me to buy ganja over Swallowfield. And he would tell me, if police come, throw it and run. And I, 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 I listened. <laughs> I went, I'd go buy, buy the marijuana for the man, you know what I'm saying? And when I told the man I'm getting baptized, the man said, if you ever get baptized, I'll beat you. I said, what? And listen, my mom was paying that joke of good when they stayed at his house. And then I snuck and got baptized. Mr. Dennis, boy, then came the judgment. Boy, listen, in those days we had those keys, man, those long steel key. Listen, that man took the key and hit me in the head right here. The mark is still. And to add insult, he would cook pig tail soup every Saturday. And I was attending Swallowfield 
Roosevelt is near church. Sister Claudia used to, uh, Claudia Dragon used to go there too. And I didn't know better, so I, I go home. I see the pig, so I took out the pork and eat the dumpling. <laughs> yeah, give me Jesus. It, it ain't no better. I, I'm not gonna eat, but the whole thing was contaminated. I didn't know that. I'm not gonna eat the pig. But I eat the dumpling and the yam, and that continued for months until one day a sister, we were talking. And my, my, she said, no, you can't do that. She said, the whole thing is contaminated. <laughs> she said, come home, lunch with us. Yeah. And saying I never went back home. We had chicken and beef. We weren't a vegetarian. We were clean, clean stuff, you know what I'm saying? But it will bring division. And you know when the man, he, listen, he, he, he died. And they were collecting to bury the man. I did. I did. I sent him some money. And I said, now, you know, I said, you know, Wayne Richards, may your father rest in peace. I left it at that. I, I, I you know, could have put him on, could have stick him up. <laughs> but that would not be let bygone to bygone. And I sure hope that he, you know, made some kind of peace with the Lord. Because he hasn't seen anything yet, right? But it, sometimes it does bring division. Are we willing to open our homes to these people? I know we got the three, four, five bedroom. Are you willing to take them in? If not, leave them. I'm telling you. Saints, you don't know what will happen when these people take a stand. The devil will get angry. You may have to take them in. Put them up for a while till they can sort themselves out. Are we willing? And Christ says, what you'd have men do unto you, do it also unto them. Right? My relatives will disown me. It is true. Adventism is hated. And you can't be neutral about it. Either you love them, or you hate them, or you say, who are they? And it reflects on us. They don't know. But there's no neutrality when it comes on to Adventism. Right? My children will disown me. And we've seen it. We've seen it over and over again where people are put out. We read these stories because of the truth and the Sabbath. This is, this is real. This is very, very real. And we need to be prepared to meet these objections, not just with God loves you, may have to help them until they can sort themselves out, right? Here it is now. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 37, He that loveth father or mother more than me, is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not what? Worthy. Is not worthy of me. What am I trying to say? Beloved, don't let objections catch you off guard. As you enter the homes and the situations, you know when to expect them, right? Don't let objections catch you off guard. Expect them. As you prepare your study, our study guide, determine what objections someone could have right be prepared to have texts available if they are what needed so i'm telling you when i go in the home to do a study on the sabbath or if i'm getting there i already i'm preparing myself i'm you don't catch me no blind side i know this is a reality that when i make my appeal you may say this so i'm having these texts lined up on my lesson jot down highlighted in my bible and I'm preparing myself to help to remove that objection and lead that person all the way even to the water of baptism, right? Be prepared to have texts available if, you are, if they are needed. It is not necessary to use them unless there is what? An objection. Again, you have this in your chart. You look for testing truths. Again, what are some of them? The law, Sabbath, Sabbath New Testament, the mark of the beast. Healthful living is, is, is the one that you may expect, right? Uh, tithing is a big one, right? And all, church standards, right? Church standards, you know, some people, you know, they, can, they can't part with their jewelry. I'm telling you something, they, listen, and they want you to baptize them in it, not me. You, you love it that much, then you're not worthy to join this church, right? And, you, and, 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 and then, all right, and some Spiritual gifts. Some may have a hard time accepting Ellen White, but they may not know it. They, they, may, they, they may, you know, 
those who have been pre-poisoned. But whatever era of truth you test in truth, my appeal is be ready. Be prepared. Do not let the objections catch you off guard. The scripture declares a true statement. And more and more as I teach this, I am seeing this text to be true. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth soul is wise. And if we are not wise, then somebody said, then we are, we are otherwise. And that brings to a conclusion, lesson number six. Were you blessed? Amen. Amen. Now, beloved, we only have three more lessons left. And um, then we are preparing to go out in the field. You know, we have located uh, two possible venues. And so we are trying to work in a concentric circle. But we'll unfold that more as we bring it to the PM team and discuss um, the plans. We only have a short time left, amen? So may, get, may God help us to be, to be prayed up and, um, and be willing to, to support the meetings, not just through your prayers, but I've learned it takes a crowd to draw a crowd. Amen? So may God bless you and may you be wise. And as we leave, remember that evangelism is contagious. Let us start an epidemic. Amen. Amen. All right, let us, let us, let us close off in prayer. <clears throat> Loving Father in heaven, Lord, we are just so thankful and grateful for the opportunity that has been afforded us to meet as a people and just to seek to teach each other, instruct each other how we can be better soul winners for you. Father, you have, you're counting on us here at Acreage Church. Um, the field is wide and ripe and ready to harvest. I pray that you will continue to place the burden of souls on our hearts. May we do all we can, dear Lord, to win souls for you. May you, Lord, grant us your spirit. I know some of us, we're timid, Lord, and we don't think that we can do it. But all things are possible if we will just take hold of the hand of Jesus. I pray even now that you will, you have many sheep in Wellington and all these areas that We'll hear your voice. We will go forth, not doubting. We will be very optimistic about the campaign, knowing that the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. May you continue to bless us as a people. And Lord, may we, may we seek, O oh God, to put away our differences, dear Father. Lord, we do not want anything to retard the Holy Spirit's working in our, in our lives and in this church. And I pray that we will let bygones be bygones if if a brother has done, or done us wrong, or a sister, dear Lord, may we, may we be a man enough, a woman enough to, to go to them and express our, our concerns to them in a Christ-like manner. And if wrongs have been done on both parts, Lord, help us to forgive. Um, if we can't forgive our brothers and sisters that we can see, how do we expect that you will forgive us, O oh Lord? Let us not be like that servant who owed his master 10,000 talents. And when the master forgave him, Lord, he went on his way and he found that servant who owed him 1,000 talents. And he was so rough and, un, uh, and, and to that servant and threw him in prison. May we be merciful, dear Father. May we consider ourselves, lest we be tempted, dear God. I pray you'll help us. Lord, soften our hearts. It will be a shame for us to come and sit and hear and listen and and we are not speaking to brothers and sisters in the church. We are malicious. We are vindictive, Lord. These are not the fruit of the Spirit. Please take these things from our hearts. And Lord, if there's any in this church, Lord, who have ought against each other, don't let the sun set, O oh God, without them making amends, praying for their brothers and sisters. And if we have to correct them, if they have done wrong, may we do it in the Spirit and in the manner of Christ. And may we forgive them and pray for them and move on. 
May we seek to be our brother's keeper, dear Lord, and let Acreage be a church, not just for uh, presenting truths, but may it be a church known for genuine and sincere love. Lord, I pray for myself, Lord, and I, sometimes I may say things and do things and not knowingly may have offended any, but Lord, if I have, Lord, I pray you'll forgive me. And Lord, if it is of such a nature where I, ha I have to go and speak to that person, Lord, then lead me. I want to be saved in your kingdom and I don't want to be a stumbling block for any in this church. I want to be saved, dear God. I want my family to be saved. I pray you'll bless us and keep us and guide us. Until we meet again is our prayer in Jesus' name.